NTT Global Data Centers and Cloud Infrastructures India. Mr. Ellen Kannan, Jay Prakash, IT in charge, Baba Atomic Research Center, Government of India. And Mr. Dhanashekaran S, CTO, Bellstar Microfinance Limited. So over to you, Mr. Amol. Hello. 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 Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks, W Media, for arranging such a beautiful program at Chennai. And I really appreciate the efforts they have put in. Okay, let us start quickly. I'll not talk much about the welcome and other things. Let us quickly talk about the introduction. So, myself, Amul Dandagaukar. I'm an electrical engineer by profession and a chartered engineer from MIT. I'm working with Arup India as a data center discipline head. Uh, based out of Mumbai office. Uh, quickly introduce about Arup. Arup is a multidisciplinary company having headquarters in UK and across all 140 countries we do have presences and especially for data center vertical we do have more than 3,000 people who are supporting each and every individual uh, across the globe. So along with me I have five panelists. Over to you. Please yourself. Hi, good afternoon to all. My name is Adini. I'm short Adini. Um, I'm an engineering graduate and I did uh, executive management program in SP Jain. Also did uh, chief operations officer program in IIM Kolkata. I'm currently working as a head of architecture and global technology in Alcargo Logistic Limited. And Alcargo is, is a global shipping and logistics company which spreads in 20 to 200 plus countries where we used to do all the you know inland shipping air by air okay okay so all cargo is basically is you know a global logistic and shipping company which present in 200 plus countries where we used to do the you know shipping across the, you know all the transports by road by air by shipping line and I have been heading all the digital transformations across the all cargo logistics group companies. Thank you. Over to you. Good afternoon, everyone. Myself, Ganesh Pawar. I head data center operations in Equinix India, which includes uh, operations of critical facilities, customer fit out projects, uh, then procurement, compliance, admin security. Thank you. Good afternoon, all. This is Ashish Zoshi from NTT Procurement. Uh, I am with NTT from last uh, seven plus years. Overall, 19 years of experience in uh, procurement. Uh, as you know, NTT is the number one data center company in India and one of the uh, top three company in uh, across the globe. Thank you. Good afternoon, all. Uh, my name is Selangkandan Jay Prakash. I am working for Baba Atomic Research Center. I work as an IT in charge over there. I take care of data centers, uh, like uh, building data centers as well as maintaining. Uh, so, you know, this is a <coughs> government organization. So, uh, we are just having our own data centers and without any uh, uh, private uh, 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 entities. That's it. Uh, good afternoon all. My name is Dhanush Shekhar and I am the Chief Technology Officer of Bellstar Microfinance and I am almost uh, 20 plus years of uh, BFSI industry vector. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks everyone for quick introduction. So the topic today what we discuss about the new strategies for balancing data center risk, sustainability and cost. Okay, so given the you know massive or exponential increase in data digital economy, uh, we are everyone is talking about you know sustainability at some point of risk, at some point of time cost, procurement challenges. Okay, so let us talk uh, and understand from the panelists what are their experiences and how what are the strategies they want to adopt or what is their thought process uh, to the uh, to, to, to the entire team 
So I'll just uh, put down a few questions to my panelists. So very first question uh, from my side to Adeni Sudhakar, Dhanashekharan, and Ilankanan. So question is, what are the key factors that determine whether a data center represents a good investment? And second question, how have these changed over past few years, and how will these change going forward? Thank you. See, I think you know, data center is definitely one of the good investment, right? Because without that, we could not able to run our operations. For any business, it has to run IT operation. Data center is the key thing, right? Okay. So, whether it is a good investment depends upon the various factors and where we are going to locate it. Because we, the other panelists also know, spoke about a lot of factors that would impact the you know investment of the data center success, right? The location and the environment factors. That the location is the you know, natural disaster, desert free, and the kind of support what we have, the network and the you know, connectivity part, the, the people availability, and the you know, government support, all those factors would be you know, one of the key elements, right? But if you take about in India, today we have seen most of the places, the metro cities are the major things because of you know, all those facilities are being available. But slowly we are transitioning because government is supporting a lot and a lot more you know, infra support to make that so that we are being spreading to you know, the lower uh, cities as well. So these are the key factors that would be support. To answer the second question, you know, how would, you know, what is the transformation that has been happening? I think if you look at the you know, traditional journey of the you know, traditional data centers, today what we are in, there is a lot of transformation has been happening, right? In terms of, you know, the, the kind of, you know, the capacity power as well, and the power efficiency, and is the availability, redundancy, everything has been happening today. Because today data centers are AI and embedded inside that part. Because they could be able to take the decisions if they know my servers are hot. What could be the next alternate I could be able to do it? How I could be able to make it more cooler so that you know, the servers can have, have the long life? The another aspect that edge servers are becoming more coming because more and more uh, servers are edge servers coming. The capacity is being increased, more redundancy, more failover. So I think you know, it's been an incredible journey if you look at from the traditional way up to the today what we are going. I think moving forward, everything could be you know, more renewable energy, right? The, uh, the data centers can run on by you know renewable energy such as um, the wind energy, solar things. I think that is the way forward approach is going to happen because power being the, one of the critical source of you know economy, right? And uh, we have to look for the alternatives. So that's the reason I think you know the moving forward it will be the great journey for the, you know uh, the data centers. Uh, now the data center has been grown uh, very much better as a in fu um, <coughs> near future it will grow as a data center is the heart of the digital networking so everyone you are even a common person is using the mobile phone and uh, each data has been transferred uh, so anything any even a transaction everything is going to be through the data center only so the data center what are now they are uh, using a lot of uh, old techniques of power management and they have to come up with a new uh, techniques like renewable energy like uh, sarah's told uh, solar energy wind energy uh, now they in some foreign countries they have uh, introduced some uh, um, like um, storage cells the storage cells will be uh, very helpful even if the, any disaster is there it will be very helpful uh, the data center will be continue the support without any interventions. So for sustainability, the new architecture as well as new technology has to be improved. So this is my view. Uh, the uh, demand and uh, uh, cyber security and uh, uh, these are some of the uh, key areas which uh, helps to make the uh, data centers are very profitable even uh, nowadays uh, india is the uh, um, more uh, uh, india is the home for more than 100 unicorns and every quarter india is turning out uh, at least one or two unicorns all these unicorns uh, they are backed with a uh, huge uh, it and uh, all these it requires uh, huge computing uh, as well as the storage and uh, aa and uh, ml these are the another key areas 
which powers these unicorns and in turn these creates a lot of demands so these de uh, huge demands uh, really helps to uh, uh, sustain uh, data centers even if we look at it, the upi transaction uh, we are the uh, india is the number one in the uh, online payments globally so the numbers are uh, phenomenal so uh, india needs lot of uh, computing capacity so really the demand is uh, unbelievable so definitely it will help uh, to make a data center is one of the uh, good uh, investment and uh, another thing is uh, the cyber security and it security aspect because uh, the uh, industry is very very dynamic and today security is not good enough for tomorrow because the hackers are very advanced and whatever the controls we are putting up uh, they are coming up with the uh, cracking mechanism so always it's kind of a catching up game so the data centers it helps to provide a additional security layer for the organizations uh, which is not core strength for them because many organizations their core strength is a different so it security is a, a, a extra burden but uh, the data center helps to bridge that uh, area and uh, the uh, energy uh, as uh, some of the fellow panelists said uh, renewable energy and uh, immersed cooling uh, are the uh, futures to go on even in countries like sweden and all they use the uh, heat generated in data centers to uh, heat their homes because uh, europe is a, a cold nation so this kind of uh, uh, innovations helps uh, reduce the uh, energy consumption these are uh, my views thank you thanks everyone so uh, moving forward to sec next question the question for ashish joshi and um, adini sudhakar definition of uh, sustainability means when it comes to dc procurement thanks amul so i think uh, sustainability is now a buzzword uh, which is really catching across the data center industry so uh, when we are talking about the sustainability there is a lot of leap services going on from last uh, one one year, one and a half years but the actual implementation if you look at from the indian data center perspective it's really lacking uh, there are very few uh, uh, players which are large players which are driving the data center growth co location provider which we called are really not ready to take that risk to invest into the uh, the sustainability initiatives right now if we look at the sustainability from a data center perspective we have to look at two aspect one is uh, site selection and then building if we don't select the right site which is approachable uh, which is where the water source needs to be re uh, readily available power source needs to be readily available if we don't do that due diligence and the site selection happens in a haphazard manner then i think sustainability talking after site selection doesn't matter at all same logic goes to the uh, core and shell and mep if we don't use a uh, zero carbon <coughs> effective materials and then we go on for uh, uh, igbc and lead certification ports facto again that doesn't make it's uh, again become a theoretical topic of lead lead and igbc certification so it has to be come from a site selection building the core and shell and then mep uh, equipment which we deploy so that that going to be a game changer if we really want to be a carbon zero net carbon zero by 2030 or 2035 okay thank you um, adini what is your view on this i think my colleague explained pretty much covered right i think sustainability is uh, definitely you no know, it's not only uh, meant for the you know dc it's been the buzzword for across the industries i've been implemented for one of the you know the agronomy company where there is a mandate that in Euro european countries when they purchase the goods they have to see how much carbon emission has been happened from the end to end supply chain perspective the moment you source the you know product and but it from the raw material to till the finished goal how much water is being used how much carbon is being emitted how much electricity is being emitted and based on that matrix you no know, the customers the premier customer like nestle marsh they would able to give the premium if it has been fully sustainable so that is that you no know, thing kind of a thing is been happening 
people are looking towards the more organic, more sustainable products. And it has been extending, right? The same thing I'm doing, you know, current organization also, how we could be able to measure the sustainability in logistics in terms of Indian development. So it is also the same phenomena for the data centers because that is the foundation for any, to run any kind of operations, right? As I said, definitely the key aspects and factors that needs to be the one is the you know, energy, water resources, and uh, the kind of you know, waste you are generating, right? These are the key things. Because the waste that is producing is nothing but the you know, carbon emission. How you could be able to minimize that? What are the sustainable practices you have been implementing while selecting the data center, while running the data center? How you are going to control it? Because the manufacturers of the you know, OEM also are making more sustainable, right? Because that's where you know, the, they were able to see that they were able to generate less consumption, less carbon emission, and how you could be able to you know, reuse those energy, right? And these are the things definitely would be able to know very important role will play in the moving forward. I think definitely it could be the more uh, green data centers would be able to come probably next 10 years. That's what I'm seeing because that's what, no, the everywhere across the industries, no, from the OEM perspective, the you know, implementation perspective, everyone is focusing on that part because it's a need of an hour for the you know, community and enterprise and for the world. I think, you know, these are the best practice. We as a leaders also need to think how we could be able to you know, avoid the, you know, uh, this carbon emission, how we could be able to use sustainable products and make it more sustainable. Thank you. Thank you, Arini. Uh, one more question from my side to Ashish. Okay, uh, sorry for that. Uh, <laughs> since it's not listed Actually, over here. I was having many points, yeah. but I thought just to pass okay. it. Yeah. When uh, the uh, entire world is talking about sustainability, reducing carbon footprint, as a procurement head, you may have your own budgets. Okay, so how do you look at all these aspects? Because again, there's a uh, you know, uh, we have to maintain the sustainability, the reduction in carbon footprint that, that budgets are happening at one time. So how do you promote this particular aspect? Uh, yes, thanks. Uh, so, see, it's like a, what we can say, a key question for all data center uh, co-location provider that what is the budget? Right, so any, any, anything, anybody in the organization will keep on talking about budget then everything what we talk about, the sustainability, uh, RE, and all. So anyways, it's a balance mix of that. How, whenever we go as an organization of uh, coming from entity, we have taken a pledge to go carbon neutral by 2030. So we have, the way uh, fellow panelists told that, first aspect comes is, what is today's carbon emission by us? Are we tracking that? Are we reporting to a global organization? then only we can be on the carbon neutral. So this is a, also one of the parameters where we have to track what is a, we are emitting towards the society on the carbon side. Coming back to the budgeting, this is a kind of a tricky uh, question and there is no, uh, what we can say, tangible answer. But it's on the based on technology to technology, how we are being uh, ascertaining and we are evaluating. I can give a couple of examples. Uh, since we, everybody is from the technical background, there is a transformers which we buy for a substations. Uh, those are power transformers. Those comes into Easter oil as well as mineral oil. Mineral oil is readily available. It's a renowned from last 50, 60 years. Everybody is using the mineral oil. But is it sustainable product? I, ca I cannot say yes to that answer. But then are we as an organization ready to invest for a Easter oil kind of a technology where the usage and the used cases are rare. That call has to be taken by the respective organization. And it's not only the business call, it's also only costing front. Okay, because whenever we invest in a new technology, it comes with the cost. It cannot, cannot be, a, we can say, okay, it has to be at the same or lesser than the existing technology which are being used from last 70, 80 years. So that's, that's a balanced approach which entity as an organization has been taking, and I think everybody in the same industry has to decide. Okay, great. So, uh, next question for Dana Shaykaran, Jay Prakash, and Ganesh Pawar. How are technology and operational practices being leveraged to optimize energy efficiency, and how can sustainability be achieved through other technological applications? Yeah, thank you, Amal. So talking about PUE is, of course, the lesser the PUE, higher is the energy efficiency. Okay, so 
gone are the days where the data centers were designed for a PV which, is, which was 1.8 plus. We have seen the data center phase where the PVs were designed for 1.6 to 1.8. And nowadays we are seeing the hyperscale data centers which are designed for as low as 1.35 to 1.6 PV. So that is a transformation and improvement happening on the PV design. And how it is being achieved is basically we have a lot of technologies available in the market. If you look at from the design perspective, we have the cooling, which is higher consumers as far as data center power is concerned. So people have transitioned from traditional designing of 7 to 14 degrees Celsius as a supply temperature to 18 to 25 and 20 to 20, 27 degrees Celsius. So that's a transformation which has been seen in Chiller's design. In addition to that, people have also started adopting ASHRAE A1A standard, which talks about 27 degrees Celsius maintaining in the data center. Other technologies which are available from design perspective is higher efficiency chiller, higher efficiency UPS, lesser IKW chillers. We have the higher efficient transformers. Uh, LED lightings are available. VFD-based pumps and motors available. VFD-based chillers available. So those are the aspects which are basically covered in the design if you talk about choosing a higher efficient equipment to reduce the PUE impact. If, if it comes to operation part, operations we have right from chiller, you operate the chiller at higher temperatures, which is around 18 to 20 degrees Celsius set point. Same is for the cry units or PAHU unit, you operate at the elevated temperatures. We have the cold oil containments and the blanking panels and the in-rack accessories to plug all the gaps in the data hall so that air, cold air is not getting leaked. In addition to that, we have LED lights, motion sensors, and VFDs, which also covers in the operations. For Equinix, we have worldwide around 255 data centers, and our average PV for all these data centers stood at 1.46 last year. So that was around 5.5% reduction as compared to last year. If you talk about sustainability, uh, Renewable energy plays very vital and important role in sustainability. So in 2021, Equinix uh, took a pledge and commitment, global commitment, to go for a carbon neutral by 2030. Last year, in 2022, our overall consumption, which was around 716 megawatt across globe, so 96% of this consumption is, came from renewable energy. So that's the commitment which organization has taken. And not only last year, from last five years, we are drawing 90 more than 90% renewable energy power for the data center power consumptions across the globe. We have also committed that our scope one, scope two emissions will be reduced by 50% by 2030 as compared to the 2019 as a base year. And last year data shows our scope one, scope two emissions are less than 22% as compared to the 2019 base year. So this is how the holistic approach from the organization needs to be taken. And since, as Ashish told, that there are very few data center players who are driving the data center industry in India. So the request here is all the data centers, if they commit carbon neutrality by, by futuristic carbon neutrality, then definitely we are not going towards the Singapore direction where power is not available. Yeah, thank you. So over to, to Jay Prakash. Yeah, uh, regarding that power consumption as well as uh, cooling, the data centers which uh, now we are using, already we have spoken that, uh, is currently they are not, not, not much, they are going for a renewable or anything. So we have to get a practice to go for a uh, renewable energy as well as as Sarah has told, that uh, cooling, cooling we can go for uh, water type cooling. So uh, there are a lot of water type cooling, like uh, natural cooling, uh, uh, water holes, which has been uh, practiced now in some of the uh, uh, data center players. So they are having the uh, water center coolings, and that uh, water will be flowing outside. Only the coolant will be uh, coming into the data center. So most of the power will be reduced as well as the cost will be reduced. But uh, while uh, installing it, we have to go for, uh, we have to check whether the conditions will be good as well as the locations. So these are the things may, we have to take care of it before construction, these types of uh, energies. Uh, second thing, uh, even though we are using like uh, water cooling and all, if you are using a, 
uh, old type of like a hard disk, uh, manual hard disk, like um, which is having a rotatable part or something. It will also having a e waste. That e waste also gives a carbon problem for us. So we can go for SSDs. So it will be sustainable as well as uh, long lasting. And we, d we, uh, uh, we don't much, uh, 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 carbon waste for this thing. So whenever you are speaking to sustainability, we have to look after, uh, think for not more uh, for a time period. It should be around uh, for next generation also. So that the sustainability will work. Thank you. Jay Prakash. Okay. Uh, AI and uh, ML. Again, uh, it consumes a lot of uh, power and then it uh, consumes the power. In other way, the same AI and ML, it helps to predict the uh, energy usage and the uh, temperature uh, rising and all. So uh, in another way, it also helps to who optimize the power usage at the uh, data centers. So, uh, and uh, another technologies as already the other panelists said, uh, renewable energies and then uh, other uh, hardware related on areas, uh, definitely it helps to uh, consume or uh, reduce the uh, energy consumption. Thanks. So, moving forward, next question for Ganesh Pawar and Ashish Joshi. What is important to data center owners and operators? Cost or its value or return on investment? Now, this is a tricky situation. Like, whenever you want to implement the sustainability, everything comes and stuck at the cost. So, although organization wants to uh, go for energy efficient product, be it sustainability, but budget is always a constraint. So. Here, I think there's an industry thumb rule. So if the IRRs are more than 10% for any kind of renewable energy, on-site or off-site, I think the investment is good. If IRRs are around 20% for energy efficiency projects, so organization should go for purchasing those kind of equipments. So it's a balance, but if the IRRs are more than, sorry, less than 10%, then of course it's not a good investment uh, point of view. There's always battle between uh, between the selection of equipment, like he said one example for Easter oil and mineral oil. Similarly, people always think about whether to go for li uh, lithium ion batteries or we should stick to VRLA batteries. So both has its own advantage. It's an organization commitment and the budget which has been kept for to go for sustainability and reduce the energy efficiency matters most and which, which is a driving factor for selection of energy efficient equipments. See, again, the way uh, panelist is, Ganesh is saying that it's, again, a tricky question. When we say about uh, whether it is a capex, the direct cost, or whether we want to have a TCO, total cost of ownership, while taking a decision on sustainable products which are there in the market. My personal opinion, capex, being all these technology are getting evolved from last couple of years. The capex or the one-time cost is going to be high. And there is no uh, leeway or there is no shortcut to that. But the decision has to be made based on the total cost of ownership. Whether the payback time is as per the way IRR is defined in the business plan or not. So we again, there are numerous examples. I, if I be selective, then again, I, I, kept, I will be labeled as a biased panelist. But I can take a simple example of a chiller. If I take a chiller currently, uh, we have most of the data centers are using air cooled chillers and air cooled chillers are the power guzzlers they have been consuming the most power in an overall data center scenario so if we go by the traditional chillers product selection and the model definitely we can save a direct cost the cost today which we have been going to incur as an organization but if we go for a newer technology like a magnet magnetic chillers which is going to be hit to a as, as on date cost of a product. But over a period of time, the pay, how much is the payback which we are going to look at? That also going to be a decision making factor because that reduces your power consumption, that reduces your noise because most of the data centers are now vi within the city, not outside the city. So noise also become a sustainable, uh, effective parameter while we take a uh, decision 
when we'll build the data centers. So there are many numerous examples. I'm just taking one and two for the discussion space. Okay, thank you. So uh, next question for all the speakers, anyone can answer. Since everyone is talking about, you know, cost, sustainability, and the risk. Okay, this question belongs to the GC and non-GC model, the moment of operanda. So GC and non-GC model from sustainability point of view, what are the impacts, what are the advantages of both, and what are the risk factors associated with both as a uh, project, what you see? I think in my opinion, GC model is uh, obviously good. It's a turnkey uh, uh, contractor. So whatever organization decides, especially uh, if their objective is to have a highly energy efficient data center, or if they want to go for IGBC or lead while the construction of the data center, GC is a person who is going to help. So they know the objective, and accordingly, the data center is being built. If you go for numerous amount of vendors, then the objective will miss somewhere. Like I have seen a data center build which was uh, roughly around 30 rack data center which was built. And there are 16 different vendors which were involved in building this, such a small uh, data center which was for customer. So the amount of energy and time waste with these 16 vendors and the final objective is never going to meet. So GC is of course uh, having a lot of benefits over the non-GC in my opinion. Ashish, what about you? Uh, I have a, some different opinion on this. So what uh, we have been doing across the last seven, eight years, and we have been continuously building the data center within the India. I'm not talking about across the globe, within the India. So uh, we have to have a balanced approach. Uh, we have been building these data center now almost 15 data centers we have been built in last uh, three years, uh, each uh, roughly around three lakh square feet area. Uh, all are green building not a brown uh, brown field uh, data center. So all are green field data centers. So from my personal experience, which I have been going through this journey, uh, I think each data center provider or co-location provider should decide a hybrid kind of a model. So mix of GC plus non-GC. Uh, civil, the way we say core and shell and then related MEP work can be a GC. And then MEP, which which is a core has to be there because it's driven by the customer requirement, uh, market trends. It has to be done by the uh, co-location provider only. So the initiative such as sustainability, uh, optimization of a floor plan, a PUV, can be under the control of a client. Not end customer, as a client being we are building the data center. So we can drive and we can force those options while we have been designing and executing the data centers. Okay. Uh, sir, actually, uh, whenever you're just speaking about the GC, uh, it'll be a, a go for a long run. So initial cost will be a, a bit higher, but uh, once it's running, it'll give us a good returns. <laughs> when ROI, we're speaking in ROI. But uh, when, if you think about uh, traditional thing, that uh, the business will grow, but the long duty will be very less. So we have to, uh, that uh, every parts and everything which uh, we are using, it will slow down once, once in a day. So at the time, uh, only the GC will be giving the hand to run the data center. So this is my opinion. Thank you, everyone. The next question is again for all the speakers. How will thinking about data center change in the wake of hybrid IT strategies and age data centers coming to the picture? I think in hybrid IT perspective, I think you know, I think uh, the data centers plays very critical role. There. Yeah. Especially, you know, the edge data centers, right? I think, you know, that will be the critical role. I think uh, if you take where the decision has to be taken 
quickly, right? Where you know, then and there, then edge will be the more important thing, right? So that is the, the phenomena. I think that's a transformation is happening, right? Even if you take, say, the, what is the foundation for the cloud? Cloud is nothing but the combination of data centers, right? How you are building, how you are giving the decision for more for the decision making purpose. The edge will enable you faster decision making rather than you know, moving all the things. So I think edge is the the next kind of you know, emerging data centers which would be very critical uh, when it goes to the you know, rural area where that will be the co-location area. I think that will be the one of the important thing which is going to come up. More and more edge data centers will come. So today we are just beginning, but moving forward, that is the trend is going to come up in my view. So ultimately through edge data centers, we are re going close to the customers. And by doing that, you know, uh, the target is of course to go in tier two, tier three cities, build edge data centers, and that will have a positive impact of creating more uh, jobs in the market, and then infrastructure investments in the market, and those will be positive change what I can see. So as uh, both both fellow panelists said, it is going to take time. So again, I think nowadays everybody is saying that age is going to be the next big thing. Uh, it will take time to reach a mature stage the way today's data center industry is there. Because age DCs, the awareness, the acceptability at the tier 2 and tier 3 city is not as much as in tier 1 city. So in tier 1 cities, we go for a large campuses, large buildings, whereas in tier two and tier three, the acceptability is not at as much as possible, which was supposed to be expected and projected by the players as of now. That is what my opinion. Um, as Sir told, uh, the hybrid uh, IT, that will be the next generation. So whenever you're talking about the cloud data center and uh, uh, some people, like some clients, they don't want their own data to be posted in the clouds. So for security reasons, only they want the APIs and applications to be there. So there the hybrid comes in the picture. So it will be the, uh, the client's uh, decision, whether it should be a hybrid cloud or it should be a standalone data center or mix it. So everything comes in the cost as well as the uh, client decisions. So this is a perspective of mine. Cloud followed by my hybrid and followed by the data center uh, could be uh, my sequence. The reason is the uh, individual uh, organization's uh, computing needs are entirely different. Uh, organization reaches to a top uh, uh, tier. Uh, probably at that time, they will consider uh, setting up their own data center. Till that time, probably uh, adopting a cloud or otherwise a hybrid model could be cost effective, and uh, I'm foreseeing that trend to be followed. Yeah, thank you, everyone. Uh, any questions to the panelist? Yeah, please. Mike, please. See, my customers are demanding me the sustainability carbon footprint of zero currently. And we are talking about dates of 2030. So what are our plans to really speed up this process? Because we are not going to win business because like people are demanding it right away. And even if I put a contract for five to seven years from now, my one contract is going to complete by the time like we are talking about now 2030 for achieving all these targets. So what are the strategies? near-term and long-term strategies in place to achieve this, especially uh, key people like Eukinix, uh, they have these models abroad, Europe and UK geography. What about India? Basically, it's a journey. I mean, when I talk about 96% of overall power consumption comes from renewable energy, which is not a day's effort or a year's effort. It has started from way back in 2015 when Equinix committed by 2030, we will go carbon neutrality. And there was the objective clear in mind. So today, after eight years, uh, 
we are, we are drawing 96% from renewable energy. If you go in market today also, there are various models which are available for renewable energy. Setting up the renewable energy plants on premises is definitely going to take a time. However, there are other options which are available, be it open access or be it group captive which are available. So, it group captive whatever plants which are available, which are operational, if you subscribe for those plants, I, I think those targets or those timelines are far lesser if you want to subscribe. Nowadays, uh, in Mumbai, especially, we get a Tata Power there. So Tata Power has come up with an idea that if you want to go and subscribe for renewable energy, you just have to click one application and send it to us. Next month onwards, you will get 100% renewable energy power from our, prima, uh, our utility, that is Tata Power. You will get the certificate of 100% RE. But at the end of the day, you need to pay a premium of around 0.75 paisa or 0.60 paisa. So that's, that's an additional amount one need to incur if you want a quick solution. If you want a long-term solution or if you want to save a cost, go for group captive. There will be a benefit of around 50 paisa or 70 paisa uh, going for that. Sir, uh, I would like to have one more question uh, in align to this. See, what would be my uh, CapEx uh, model, CapEx driver, especially when I go for the sustainable model? What should be my uh, cutoff point to decide uh, to go for a sustainable uh, energy model? Because I need to pass on this cost to my customers at the end of the day. See, there are different models available in the market, which has been provided by the co-location provider. We have built to suit model, we have a multi, multi hyperscale plus retail model. So if, if we are looking for a customer who is only directly looking at the sustainable product, with, then we have all the avenues to go for. We have a right from the site selection, the way I started the conversation, we can go for a site selection, then lead certified building, then RE. These are the aspects which will drive the cost for a build to suit kind of a thing, which is only for a dedicated to that customer. But then the per megawatt cost cannot be benchmark against the current, what the current trend is going on. It cannot be, uh, it can be a chicken and egg kind of a situation. If somebody is so finicky about that my building where I am hosting my servers or my racks has to be a 100% carbon neutral, definitely that can be achievable in India. We have a technologies available in the India and all, I think, major co-location provider, Equinix, Entity, or uh, others are capable to do that. But is customer ready to pay that much premium is the million dollar question today. The level of uh, securities. See, because uh, the data, uh, uh, data at rest, data at uh, move, okay, you need to uh, have a proper security to uh, ensure your data is secured. So some of the uh, security layers are uh, you need to put up at the uh, uh, server level and then uh, uh, network and switches level and then again um, uh, load balancer and uh, uh, WAF uh, kind of things. Various uh, tools or uh, popular brands are available and uh, everything comes with the uh, certain cost. And uh, similarly you need to uh, deploy various endpoint security also to ensure your devices also secured. Otherwise, even if you secure your uh, uh, cloud layer, again, yeah, the, the data uh, endpoint will be vulnerable, and then it can uh, expose your thing. And uh, similarly, the uh, transit also, uh, you need to have a, a SSL and other certificates to ensure the data transmitted also uh, uh, encrypted and secured. OK, so in this case, like, uh, we do consider all these parameters in public cloud, so the same knowledge applies here as well. Yes. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Any more questions? Hi, everyone. I'm Manoj from Cognizant. I have two questions. Uh, first one being, for example, you take NTT in Asia Pacific, or you take uh, Equinix in Central Europe, US, or uh, in a UKI, right? <clears throat> the government by itself provides some com commitment on ESG, saying that you know we, the providers who are providing power for us should meet a minimum of 20, 25% ESG, right? So when you get the street power, when you get through the grid fed to you, and on top of that, when you put a 30, 40% uh, uh, you know ESG savings, right? That goes on top of it. 
in india when we build data centers right what is the uh, is there a government commitment saying that you know the grid who is supplying power for example tangent co in uh, in tamil nadu right is there a minimum requirement from the government on how much uh, renewable energy they should feed and how much you know as a dc provider that you are supposed to put on top of it that is question number 1 Question number two, going back to the gentleman from TCS who asked the question, right? What is the breaking point? So you mentioned that, you know, obviously we have all seen that, you know, you go and click a button, you always get the renewable energy, right? For example, if I am getting a 65, say, um, you know, premium for renewable, en renewable energy, and let's say my organization meets a 40% ESG commitment, do I get any kind of subsidies from the government for meeting that ESG commitment? Where, where do we, from a government perspective, how is the government helping us drive, drive this? That's the question. Yeah, for, <coughs> sorry, for uh, in India, like, you know, we are getting power from the utility companies. As of now, government have, now put, have not put any restrictions that this much of percentage you need to have subscribe for the renewable energy. It's a data center industry who are coming forward and taking such kind of pledge and commitment to go for carbon neutral or putting the sustainability efforts. But as of now, there are no restrictions from any of the utility company, nor the government, nor in Chennai, nor in Mumbai. And no subsidy either, I guess. Because there is no commitment, there's no subsidy either, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> All right, thank you. <laughs> Thank you everyone for listening to our panelists. We are running short of time, so if anyone has any questions, we can connect them offline. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much, gentlemen. Now I request Mr. Amol Dhangaukar to felicitate our panelists. Please give them a big round of applause. Memento courtesy, QG Electrics. And I request Mr. Ashish Joshi to felicitate Mr. Amol Dhankankar. Thank you once again, all the gentlemen.